Well, you had to start somewhere. Hey guys, man, it's 9132 and the Robot Wars Guru. Series 1 of Robot Wars was in many ways a product of its time. You can look back at the robots of Series 5 to 7 and easily see how they would be the previous generation of robot fighting machines that came before what we have today. Series 1 robots, on the other hand, not so much. I'm pretty certain that this was the only series where it was acceptable to think that a pink plastic wheelie bin lid was good armour. The layout and look of the show was a lot different too, focusing on trials and driving skill and having a much grungier look. Modern Robot Combat and even the later classic series are renowned for being bright and colourful and focusing on the fighting side of things. Oh, and Jeremy Clarkson was host. I mean, hell, that alone makes Series 1 seem like it's from its own reality. It's easy to point a finger at Series 1 and laugh. After all, a lot of the battles weren't great, no one really knew what they were doing, leading to many questionable build, build choices, and it was certainly lacking in the damage department. But despite this, I think overall it does pretty well. Sure, we got some duds in there, but Series 1 also gave us some decent battles, interesting designs, and some design concepts that are in major use today. It's a time capsule of a simpler time, where you and your mates could build a robot in your shed for 100 quid and it could have a chance. It's also the series that gave us legendary roboteers and teams, such as Rex Garrett, George Francis, Bodmin Community College, Random Violence Technologies, The International Wrecking Crew, Team Cold Fusion, and Dartford Girls Grammar. And whilst most robots didn't live up to the challenge, they were still able to put on a show. In light of this, I decided to rank all six episodes of Series 1. I was originally going to do a top insert number here, but considering there's only six episodes, I figured I would just rank them in order of worst to best. So, let's get going. Number 6, Heat D. The featherweight heat was never going to be a success story because the technology wasn't there yet to make something so small an actual contender. Most modern featherweights have enough strength to actually have an effect on a heavyweight robot, but back in Series 1, the best you got was a weaponless box or wedge. When Saturn, a box with a cow's face painted on it is the most interesting machine of the heat, you know you're in trouble. Somewhat annoyingly, the episode started alright with some really good gauntlet runs. Even eventual loser Vector of Armageddon did a really good run that would have beaten several heavyweight runs. But it's all downhill from there. The stock car race is without question the dullest and least interesting trial of the whole series and the arena stage was bad. And I mean bad. Like three of the worst battles of the series. I think it's amazing how we now have robots that weigh even less than this, but are way more effective. Heat D was a ballsy heat to consist of just featherweights, but that's not enough to save it. Number 5, Heat C. Box, wedge, box, wedge, yeah, you can see where this is going. Heat C, as far as robots is concerned, is perhaps the dullest heat of the series. This wasn't helped by the fact that Plunderbird, the most interesting robot of the heat, lost in the gauntlet stage while stock robot WYSIWYG was allowed to go through. Plunderbird had interchangeable weaponry, the first of its kind on this show and we didn't even get to see it. The only other interesting robot in the heat was Dreadnought, which never worked. That sums up the other issue with this heat. Robots either didn't work, weren't driven properly, or didn't stand a chance. The only thing that solidifies this above Heat D is that the trial was a lot more interesting. Football was always one of the better trials of Robot Wars, to the point that it was one of the most popular events on its sister show, Techno Games. But other than that, this heat was a dud. Though seeing Robot the Bruise out push Dev Metal in the gauntlet was impressive. Number 4, Heat E. We are moving away from the bad heats and moving on to the heats that were okay, just not great. Enter Heat E. I'll be honest, this heat definitely captured the imagination of the sport with all six robots being unique in their own right. And while some didn't work out, I still have huge respect for the team for trying something new. The gauntlet was a bit dismal I'll admit, especially with Warthog's pathetic performance, but the maze trial was fun and the three battles were actually battles. Not only that, but Reality vs Full Metal Anorak was a good hard fought fight between two robots of different weight classes. Sure, the heat final was full of controversy after Shunt freed Body Hammer from the grill, but it was one of the more eventful heat finals. My main issue though is that Body Hammer wasn't exactly a deserving heat winner. Not only did it struggle with the gauntlet and trials, but it even struggled immensely against reality, as I mentioned previously. Still, that aside, it was at least an entertaining heat. Number 3, Heat F. Heat F is much like Heat E in a lot of ways. It has a fun trial which was never seen again, was chock full of interesting robots and had three very fun battles in the arena stage. So why did I place it higher? Well, that's because it contained the Series 1 Grand Final Battle, of course. This is considered by many to be the best fight of the series, and who am I to blame them? It was pure chaos from activate to cease. 
Sure, it's tame by today's standards, but at the time, seeing six robots go at it like this was very special. It was the first round of an Annihilator four years before such a thing existed. This fight alone has a huge legacy and is highly important for the show, crowning its first ever champion, Roadblock. That's not to say that the heat itself wasn't very good on its own merit, because it was. Seeing Prince of Darkness boss the gauntlet in trials was impressive considering its uncouth design, and Tracy paved the way for invertible Rambots everywhere. Number 2. Heat A I can see this being an unpopular decision, but I have my reason. First off though, I have to talk about Heat A because, my god, what a start to the legacy that is Robot Wars. Right off the bat, we got to see some of the more memorable and dangerous robots the early series would produce, such as Roadblock, Killatron and Nemesis. We saw the house robots for the first time, Philippa for the first time, and of course JP's lovely voice box, shouting himself hoarse over all the action. We got some memorable moments too, such as seeing the polka dot fur burn for the first time, Shunt being beaten in the sumo, and Roblox just bossing everything in its path. The gauntlet runs were all great, for the most part, and the sumo basher was exciting and fun, for the most part. And whilst the battles were a bit one-sided, they were still entertaining. However, despite all this, I couldn't quite put it at number one. That spot goes to... Number 1. Heat B I'll be honest, it was a tough call between Heat B and Heat A simply because they both have a lot in common. Much like Heat A, we saw some great versatility in designs for this heat, including Future Legends Mortis and Rex Garrett with Recyclops. The gauntlet and trials were all really fun, and the arena stages were fantastic. So why did they put it higher than Heat A? simply because it did all these things better. The British Bulldog trial, while simple, was very sweet. Essentially, this was a house robot rebellion five years before the idea had been coined. In it, we saw the very first time a house robot was flipped as Recyclops flipped over Matilda. Seeing Shunt get beaten in the sumo was one thing, but this was on another level. And the battles were just better in this heat. Seeing Mortis pepper pot the hell out of Lee Bot was one of the most destructive battles of its time. Again, it's tamed by today's standards, but at the time, this was something special. And the heat final between Mortis and Recyclops is one of the closest, most hard fought battles, not just of Series 1, but for the next few series to come. It was so close, the judges wanted to give it a draw. Overall, Heat B did everything Heat A did, just better in my book. And that's it for this list and this video. Do you agree with me or do you think I'm a pillock? How would you rank the heats of Series 1? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Anson9132, the Robot Wars Guru, and I'll see you next time.